The story about health and beauty and money and Uncle Sam. Tanning. Millions of Americans do it. Climbing into one of those beds, you'll get darker and you'll raise your risk for cancer. Despite those risks, it is big business. But for tanning salon owners, a greater chunk of that business will soon go to the government. That's right, as of July, tanning will be taxed. A win for fair skin, perhaps? But is it fair policy? John Donvan has our report. Let's state the obvious immutable fact. The reason people do this, and the reason they do this, and the reason that a woman named Snooki speaks truth to many when she says on the reality show Jersey Shore, I like tan Italian boys with muscles, is all because of a very simple idea whose initials are WPTTLBB, which stands for White People Think They Look Better Brown, and some non white people too. An idea so deep set in our culture that nothing can change it unless it be a tax on tanning. Honestly, I think the tax was just something that was thrown in because they're trying to find a backdoor way to tax middle class Americans. Meet Chris Hart, tanning salon owner, and don't even get him started on the tanning tax that kicks in this summer. Do you think that so it's a direct assault on what you're trying to do? So do I take it as a direct personal assault on this business? No, I don't look at it that way. I look at it as a tax on uh, small business owners, I look at it as a tax on consumers, it's a tax on Americans. Well, every tax is a tax on Americans, but if your heart... Okay, what's the last name? ...whose business just off the campus of George Washington University is thriving, even with school on break customers were coming in, if you're Chris Hart, a 10% tax on what he sells is a direct threat. What am I going to do about the tax? I'm going to pass it on to my customers. And what's going to happen? I'm going to have less customers. But guess what? That is exactly what many supporters of the tanning tax want. I think the tax is a wonderful thing. They want less action on the tanning beds, a lot less. If I had my way, absolutely I would outlaw them, yes. Meet Deborah Sarnoff, dermatologist. And all she asks of Americans is to give up tanning beds. And while they're at it, give up tanning in sunlight, too. We're really trying to get the message out there that tanning is so over. Really? It's already the end of WPTTLBB? No. Far from it. Not when the tanning bed industry alone is said to be a $5 billion a year business. Not when being tan still makes the old feel young and the young feel beautiful. Not when behind the counter of Chris Hart's own establishment, there are fair-skinned young women like Frances Parker, who can be called beautiful as she is, but who nevertheless feels more beautiful the bronzier she is. I mean, we have so many events to go to. We have formals, we have graduation. It's nice to have a little bit of color, look like you haven't been in the library all day. But for all this, for all the gleam and the gloss and the shimmer that comes with the tinge and the tone and the tincture, Dr. Sonoff has just one word to throw into the works, and it is... Cancer, 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 cancer. The word she believes as senior vice president of the Skin Cancer Foundation that can make tan look ugly. With the fact that every day more than 20 Americans die from skin cancer, primarily melanoma. That's one death from melanoma almost every hour. It's a human carcinogen. Many people don't realize that it's right up there with arsenic or um, plutonium or um, radon. Very many carcinogens that are proven in humans. She's talking about the UVA light that is used in tanning beds, but she could be talking about... Because, you know, cancer has killed cool before. Smoking was so very cool. A habit for the healthy, for men who rode horses, for liberated women who were changing the world. you come a long way, baby. But cancer made ashes of that image, that plus some heavy taxes put on tobacco, and smoking started to look dirty and sickly and sad. So if you're in a room with smokers, get out of there. So here's what the tanning war comes down to. There's what Snooki says. I like tan Italian boys with muscles. Versus what the Skin Cancer Foundation says in its new ad campaign. Tanning's 15 minutes are over. Go with your own glow. But also by making the anti-tanning message not just about cancer, 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 but also about how tanning 
is making your skin like leather. I always tell my patients fine leather belongs on a handbag, not your face or not um, your body. So who is winning the tanning war? Well, considering that business is booming, that more than 30 million people are using tanning beds still, loving the look they get in minutes for typically less than 10 bucks a session, it would seem that WP double T L double B is winning, which Chris Hart says is only reasonable. The bottom line is, I thought it was all about options and, and consumer behaviors when we're talking about you know business in America. Uh, and, and so if a consumer wants to use this, who are we to say that they can't use that? Let's let them use it. What matters, he says, is just that you don't overdo it. And in fact, tanning beds come with government approved guidelines under which the maximum time you can spend is 12 minutes or less. And all that is controlled out here at the front desk. We control it here and then it goes to the bed and when she's ready, she just presses start. So if the dermatologist's side is not yet changing minds. When you enter that box, you're taking the risk because there's no such thing as a safe tan. Maybe the tanning tax will change minds? That's the idea. It starts in July. We should know more by the end of summer. I'm John Donvan for Nightline in Washington.